Right, what do you want to know about the Bowers & Wilkins PX8? A couple of weeks ago, I reviewed the Bowers & Wilkins PX7 S2 headphones. Spoiler, I absolutely loved them and didn't want to give them back. Good news, I don't have to give them back because they've let me hold on to them, which is very, very kind. But it's even better news for you guys because it means I can compare these PX7 S2s against the brand new PX8s. These are about £220 more expensive than these, and they look pretty similar. So the big question is, what do you get for that £220 extra? In the UK, the PX8s cost £599, which, as mentioned earlier, makes them quite a bit more expensive than the PX7 S2s. It also places them squarely in the expensive consumer headphone bracket. And yes, it makes them more expensive than the AirPods Max. In the press release for the PX8s, they do go some way to justify that cost, because they refer to the fact that these headphones rely on reference standards for their sound, build and finish. That basically means they're a cut above normal consumer headphones. You're supposed to be getting quite a bit for your money. But spec-wise, they're nearly identical to the PX7 S2s. In fact, the only difference I could spot on the spec sheet was a change to the cone material on these compared to the PX7 S2s. And that's apparently intended to reduce distortion and improve transparency. Everything else is pretty much the same, but that isn't a bad thing. So they're Bluetooth 5.2. They're compatible with all of the audio codecs you'd care about. They've got four mics for active noise cancelling and two for taking calls and battery life is rated at a fantastic and increasingly standard 30 hours with a 15 minute charge delivering seven hours of playback but you still want to know what you get for that 599 pounds don't you if you watched my PX7 S2 review, if you didn't, I'll put a link above, you'll know that I love Bowers & Wilkins' approach to design. You just can't get these out of the box without being massively impressed with the way they look. They're reassuringly well designed and they're clearly made from very nice materials. So for instance, the ear cups and the headband are made from Nappa leather and they come in either tan or black, which is the version that I have here. There's also this lovely premium cast aluminium on the arms here, which feels very nice. And also the action on the extension Ooh, it's just, it's AirPods Max-like. I love it. Can't stop doing it. They're also very light, and if you combine that with the soft leather and the plentiful padding, are you watching Sony, you get a very nice, comfortable pair of headphones. You know how boring I am about headphone cases. Well, the case is an absolute joy as well. It's basically the same case that you get with the PX7 S2s. And again, that's no bad thing because it's nice and tough. It's got a good zip on it. It's a proper headphone case. And it also has a flap inside, which is magnetized and which you can pop all your cables and stuff in. It is a bit big, but we are in this era now where headphones only fold like that for some reason. The other thing that I love about these headphones is the controls. There's no touch controls on the PX8, so you just get proper clicky hardware buttons. The only gripe I have, which is what I had with the PX7 S2s as well, is that they're not labeled. In fact, the only one that is labeled is the power button. The others, you kind of have to guess what they are. So basically, even before you turn these things on, you're impressed. You're fairly happy with all that money you spent. But I know you've got one question. What do they sound like? If I designed a pair of headphones that sounded the exact way I wanted them to sound, it would be these. You have to remember that sound is a massively subjective topic. And as I've always said, I only ever test headphones straight out of the box. I don't EQ them. I want to know what Bowers and Wilkins think we should hear. And I personally think these sound fantastic out of the box. They sound as expensive as they are. Just like the look, the design, the feel of these things, the sound delivers big time straight away. And what's interesting is that the PX7 S2s sound too bright in comparison, and the bass on these is much more controlled. And the reason that's interesting is because I love the sound on the PX7 S2s. I referred to it in my previous review as grown up, confident and not too bombastic. Well, these add some bombast, is that a word? But they do it in such a refined, controlled, again, grown-up way. They just sound huge without being too overbearing or tiring. And although they cope with pretty much the entire frequency range really admirably, it is that bass, that bottom end, that really, really impressed me. It's just got so much grunt, so much presence, and it makes pretty much anything you listen to sound exciting. I'm not going to do a massive deep dive now into the PX8 sound, although I will be comparing these against other headphones in the near future, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. All I'm going to say is that if you spend £599 on the 
these headphones. When it comes to sound, you are not going to be disappointed at all. It is absolutely amazing, trust me. Also, the noise cancelling is very, very good. I've noted recently that we have reached a point with noise cancelling where it's pretty good across the board, particularly if you're spending 250, 300, 400, or even 500 or nearly 600 pounds on a pair of headphones. So, no worries there at all. The transparency mode is pretty good. It's still not as good as AirPods Max, but then nothing is. Call cool performance, it's absolutely fine. As I've always said before, I don't use headphones like this for taking telephone calls. So the PX8s are doing pretty well so far. Brilliant noise cancelling, brilliant sound, great case, great comfort, amazing design. But there's one question left to answer. Are the PX8s £220 better than the PX7S 2s? As I mentioned at the start of this video, you'd be forgiven for thinking these are the same headphones. They look pretty much identical. But there are some key differences. The first one is the materials used. So these rely a bit more on plastic compared to the PX8s. That's most noticeable on the arm, which is plastic on the PX7S 2s, and as I mentioned earlier, metal on the PX8s. Also, the Bowers & Wilkins logo on the PX8s is slightly raised. It's not printed on like it is on the PX7S 2s. It's just these little touches that make these seem, as they are, far more premium. The other thing is the sound. As I mentioned earlier, the PX8 sound measurably better than the PX7S2s. It is a very close thing, and these are both amazing sounding headphones in their own right. But when you A-B test the two, these are just better. They're basically the PX7S2s, completely refined and made to sound pretty much perfect. Are these worth 220 quid more than these? Well, I think if you've got the budget to spend and you do want the absolute best of the best, which if you're looking at a brand like Bowers & Wilkins, you're probably in that mindset anyway. I think in that instance, it's worth it. On the other hand, if it feels a bit of a stretch, then you can save yourself quite a bit of money and get yourself a pair of PX7S2s. There's no question that the PX8s do earn their flagship status. The PX8s are a pair of headphones that you will not regret buying if you've got all that money. I don't want to give these back, but I do have to give these ones back, which isn't a hint at all. But before I give them back, I am going to compare them against the AirPods Max and also the Focal Barties, and maybe some others, I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you want to see me pitch these PX8 against. And on the subject of the Focal Barties, I reviewed those headphones recently. They are the most expensive headphones I've ever reviewed. So if you want to find out what I thought about those, keep watching for a link to that video.